Hi guys, this is Nikki with uh, Techies Eddie, and uh, I got some used tapes, um, some Sony UX Pro 90, and the label, the J card, well there was some labels as you can see probably, and I peeled it off, um, mostly successful as you can see, and I also got a Denon HDM. These are metal cassettes. I love these styles. They look very similar, don't they? The shell. Um, but they do have some problems. Um, I actually bought two of these and they have the exact same problem. So maybe they are either it is the way they are they were stored from the last owner or um, it's just the way it is with this tape. But the problem I have with it when I first got it was the tape was really, really twisty. And so I played it back once and so that the, it's packed tight now on this reel. So it's now nice and flat. But if I unwind it just a little bit, you can already tell it's kind of twisting on its, on its own a little bit, right? See that? Can you guys see that? And that can cause a problem uh, in the long run because uh, if you're not careful, it can wrap itself around the hub, go past the hub, and then it'll come through the actual uh, part where the spindle goes through. As you can see, it's pretty badly cupped too. It sounds fine though when I was playing it. So what I was hoping for is I'm going to leave it nicely packed like this because I actually played it through once. Um, before when it was on this side, you can tell it was really wobbly on the hub. So I'm not really sure why that is. So I'm going to leave it for a week or so, you know, in stored this way for this one and the other Denon because I have the exact same one. And now I'm also working on this guy right here. The problem with this one was the fact that uh, I saw that there was a um, like a bulge on one area and then I found out that the tape was a little there's some residue. Let's see if you can see it. Maybe I passed it. Hold on. I actually found that part and I'm about ready to splice it. There you go, you can see. There's definitely something. And this is about the two and a half minute mark in. So I'm not going to sacrifice too much tape, hopefully. This being a uh, a 90 minute tape though. Oh, I wish I was hoping that this was a hundred. Mm, but at 90, two minutes. Yeah. Whew. Anyways, what I plan to do is uh, because it's at least kind of in the big be uh, beginning of the tape. I am going to actually splice this, discard all of the tape that's in here, and then, you know, just take that um, leader and just connect it back here, you know. I don't like the idea of splicing in the middle of the tape, you know. I kind of like doing it as right by the leader if possible. And since there isn't a whole lot of tape here, I don't think it's worth keeping just to have it right in the middle. Now, if it broke in the middle, then yeah, it makes it probably makes sense to try to repair it in the middle. Um, but I'm trying to keep this like a uh, like a blank tape, you know, like a an example of a UX Pro because I don't really have. I don't even think I actually have this tape. If I do, I don't have many. I think I only have maybe one, but I would have to look just to see. <laughs> but anyways, let's get started. All right, first of all, this is a very, very hard angle for me to to look at. Um, 
because I have the camera here. By the way, that's not the bad part of the tape. I actually made sure it's past it. So I know this is the part that's nice and clean. What you're seeing is the reflection of my mouse pad, <laughs> which is goes to show that that's actually a really nice shiny part of the tape. CD wants all the screws to stand straight up. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I have a little taste splicing kit uh, from Splice It. Uh, well, actually, I'll just link it below somewhere. I got it from the Tape Heads um, forum. They're a sponsor, I believe. Splice, uh, splice uh, block. That's the splicing tape. Sucks that they don't have white. That would have been nice to have. And of course the razor blade. Nice ceramic guide. Let's see. There's a slip sheet right here. I'm going to keep the orientation and place it onto. I'm going to put it right back on the uh, on the uh, other part right here. Place that aside. All right. So this is the part where I want to splice it. Move this up a little bit so you guys can see this block has some grooves in it so it will basically bite onto the tape and that's why I use a toothpick to push it in and it does deform the tape a little bit by doing that but hopefully it will be after the tape that I don't care about Or actually, this is what I'm going to do. Ooh, that's already in. All right, here, this is what I'm going to do. Place it all the way back here. And then put the tape in. should be. And that's where I'm going to do the cut. Right here. I'm going to pull this out. And I'm going to unravel and I'm now I'm going to unravel this completely to the, until I get to the leader tape. All right. Look at all this. It's still connected. Come on, get off my fingers. <laughs> tape salad is what the UK people call it. I've always called it noodles. So here is, or I call it tape noodles. Uh, this is um, the actual leader tape right here. And then there's the tape that it meets. So, I'm gonna do the back side again. Again, I'm going to try to lead it in. So I'm going to jump in here on top of the camera. Okay, it's in. Now I get the pull.
Oh no, don't want to pull that part. Nope, 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 come on. Leadertate. Do not want to deform the leader tape. And my hair's getting in the way. Sorry. Okay. I know typically you would want to go right up against the leader tape, but I kind of like that white of the leader tape, so I am just going to cut it right there. Okay, here's where the beginning of the leader tape, or the splicing tape is. I want to cut this off because I want a nice straight edge if I can. There we go. And now I gotta find, <laughs> I gotta find the end of that. Okay, here it is. Okay, and here's a trick that I've learned to try to prevent that whole problem of making the tape like deformed on the side is use a toothpick and run it along in the center and it will pop out. Uh oh, come on, easy peasy. And, you know, I've never, I never really perfected that art. <laughs> and here, yeah, this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's not perfect but it's at the very beginning of the tape and I still get to keep the white of the the white splicing tape that came from the factory instead of making it blue I actually once had to do that with a TDKMA that was eaten before and um, I regretted not doing it this method So I'm left with uh, this spaghetti of, uh, of tape, <laughs> um, but oh well, it can be tossed out. I think that ceramic looks beautiful. Yeah, okay, that part is going to look ugly, isn't it? Not much we can do about that. But then after that part, we should be all good. All right, guys, uh, I'm going to test this out. Um, so you guys remember this Sony TCWR701ES. Um, 
it's actually hooked up to this Sony CDF, um, I'm sorry, CFS 66 boombox, which there's a problem with the cassette player itself. Uh, belt seems to be working and everything. It's just that the auto stop keeps um, kicking in. But the nice thing about this one is that it does have a line in and you can use this as a glorified speaker. And that's what I'm using it for. This is connected to the line in. And I can't play too much of it. Sorry. Because I don't want to be hit by a copyright content. But let's hear at least something. Yeah, oh well. You know, it may not be because, it could probably be because of the recording itself, who knows, but um, I knew that this one still has some problems with tracking. Um, all right, let's risk it. All right, this is what I mean. I'm gonna give this a try. Um, it's an SX, that's a Type 2. 70, no Dolby, eject. I'm gonna stick this in. I'm gonna rewind this fully. Cause I wanna hear how it sounds as it passes through the, um, the leader tape. Reset, play. Hey, and there you go. See, I knew it. Something with that Sony. I don't know why. Like so with certain tapes, it does that. And I tried the, but my best to uh, align the azimuth. And well, you know, I'm just an amateur, and that's the best I was able to do. Uh, most of the tapes sounds fine, but as you can see, some tapes doesn't. And this guy sounds fine. All right, there's a little bit of dropout, but you know, <laughs> oh well, uh, it's probably because it's just, I've been handling that part of the tape, who knows? I will probably re-record over this because I think these are just studio releases. They're nothing special or anything, even though it is Survivor and somebody told me, yeah, you probably heard of them. Honestly, I haven't. I'm 39, of course, but I think this is kind of music is still be before me. I'm more of a Nirvana chick, <laughs> 90s girl, you know, high school I was in the 90s, so. And of course, music from the 80s, I'll probably hear like um, from when I was really young as a kid and you know, it's just nostalgic at that point, just because I remember I was five years old and I remember that song, you know, stuff like that, you know, not because it was during my formative years in high school or anything, <laughs> but okay, that's it. That's the video. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.